Welcome to Live and Let's Dice Live here on a Wednesday afternoon with a different camera angle because I am here at the painting table. You can see the bike from a different angle for once. It's what you pay for, clearly. Um, I'm here because of the fact that I'm going to be doing some painting today. I was thinking to myself, like, do I want to jump back into streaming because I've been away for a few weeks with something crazy like Power Wash Simulator? <laughs> or do, should I maybe like ease into it a bit more? And I felt that easing into it was probably the best bet. So what I've decided to do is just set this up so you and I and the rest of us can just chill out. We can play, uh, paint some Warhammer together. Today we're going to be painting some blobs, and I'll show you what that's going to look like in a second because this is uh, one of two cameras that's operational today. I know I'm blowing the budget. I'm blowing the budget. Um, but yeah, welcome to the other side of the room. You never get to see this side, do you? Really? Oh yeah, uh, the mic is really quiet. I can't do anything about it, unfortunately. Um, mainly because of the fact that I have no way to boost it. And it's a headset, and I've got to do it because I'm not over at my recording studio. So, let's just have a quickie look at the old settings and see if I can do anything about it on this end. But I promise you, um, I thought about it, and I was like... Can't do anything about it. Can't do anything about it. Uh, and you can turn up the mic. I can't. I don't think. There's no setting for this. And unless I have. Oh, hold on. Hold on. What's this about? Somebody's been keeping this on the, on the low. Oh, must be better. Okay, hopefully. Hopefully that will uh, improve it. I didn't actually know that it actually had a separate thing. This is why. This is why I should never be trusted with technology. This is why I should just be given pens and papers and left alone. <laughs> That's it. Just button mash it. Button mash it. That's all you got to do. Oh yeah. So um, welcome. This is a tour of the of the room on the second side. Here you can see the the bottom half of a poster. Oh, <laughs> lucky you. You can see. What else can you see? A light that I've put right in front of my face which takes up so much of the screen real estate lovely for me and uh, you can see the uh, the cord that comes down from the blue lights that i have up ab above my ceiling and of course you can see the bike everyone's favorite thing in fact i can give it a i can give a different wheel a spin it, it didn't go as, as as much as the other one it's going backwards on itself now right um on the plus side well on the plus side i actually have to have to <laughs> i have to have to talk about the bike now, this is the thing, friends. Um, people may know that recently uh, I learned to drive, and even though my car is currently in the garage, it's a story that I'll tell later on, um, I've just not ridden the bike as much. I just haven't had the opportunity. Now that Beanie's moved away, I've got nowhere to, uh, to ride it to. And to be honest, around here, you don't want a road bike. You want like a gravel bike or a mountain bike, because it's very, very hilly. So I am thinking, with heavy hearts, with heavy, best Mooly Doodles, best bike stream out there. Now, it, <laughs> you're making this harder, you're making this harder. I want to revamp the studio. I want to redo it. I've been, I've had this studio now since um, Kerry kindly let me, the actress, uh, sorry, paid actress, who I present as my girlfriend, kindly let me start living here. Kindly started, let me live in here to pay her rent. Um, and... I've had the same room since we cleared it all out, but I think that now I've kind of got to the stage where we've decided we want to stay here for a quite a while. So what I think I'm going to do is revamp the studio. I think it's time. I think it's time to get rid of the the LED lights on there. I think it's time to make this studio an actual like nice space rather than just bare walls. Because the thinking was get bare walls so that when uh, you're recording the light from the LEDs basically changes the vibe. It, it, it gives you the colour. But I just think I want a nice room. I just want a, I just want a, a nice room. So what I was thinking of doing was maybe getting like, like a darker colour in here. Better lighting. Maybe do like wood panelling stuff. I'm not entirely sure about it. I need to think long and hard about it. Because like once it's done, that'll be it. Melt the bike. Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> that's like that's like just that's just mad enough to work, isn't it? I'd have some flash gets yellow on that if I just did that. It'd be perfect. It's actually not a bad idea. It'd be such a gimmick as well, wouldn't it? Oh, um, Jules likes to play with metal models. Uh, 
no, correction, Jules likes to play with metal models that are made out of his old bike. <laughs> kind of love that. Anyway, um, let's say hello to all of the lovely people that are joining me here today because uh, you might be able to tell I'm, I'm uh, overwhelmed and rambling even more so than usual. You can tell that I've been away for a bit. Um, hello to Smooley, love ya. Hello to Count, love ya. Hello to Murphy, love ya. Hello to the young Kamikaze, love ya. Hello Lance, hello Lee, hello Greg, Christopher Steves, my armchair general. Without Christopher Steves, I would have been absolutely lost playing uh, Realms of Ruin. How you doing, your legends? Jenko, the one, the only. Kiss on the top of the head for you, mate. Well, I hope that you have brought your Warhammer today for today's painting stream. Ollie is here. Hello. Oh, Bruno says here. Yeah, Jules, buddy, been watching you on the tube for years now. First time on the stream. Buenos Aires. Buenos Aires. I hope that that's how everyone pronounces it there. Like they really roll it. Maybe even more so. Adding in an extra R, turning the N in Buenos to an R. Bueno, bueno, no, I can't do it. Uh, Buenos Aires, Argentina. Thanks for everything. Love your energy and awesome kiss. Thank you very much, mate. Bruno, I really appreciate that, man. That, that's really nice to hear. I've been um, been having a bit of a of self doubt stuff lately, so that is actually really nice to hear. I'm glad that you enjoy the content. Um, so yeah, thank you very much. Lawson in the chat. Paint faster. <laughs> I can promise you that I'll do one of those things, and that's probably going to be louder, but mainly once I end up drinking my uh, paint water by accident, as we all know, it's one to do. It is a live egg, says Sean, and again, apologies, I have been just like completely... <laughs> Noish. Oh, oh, hold on, there was, there was been, there's an alert, but the alert stuff isn't working. Classic. Cool. Yeah, I can't tell you why the alert box ain't working there. Oh, I think I know why. Who, two seconds, two seconds, two seconds. I think what's happened is it's the alert box, and I will get to the person who sent this to me in a second. It's been buried under the under the camera. So now it should be at the top layer. Right. For some reason it was the bottom layer, so it's hidden. But I've got to say a massive thank you to Sean Schultz who super chatted two dollar doo doo doo. How much of the studio will be orc models? Well, my friend. It's a bloody lot of them. I found my love for the war recently. I think it's just one of those things where when you look at the shape of 10th edition and the fact that orcs just like were sitting at that lovely sort of just over 50% win rate, not too much that they need a nerf, definitely don't need any help. They've got an extensive model range of just fun, wacky shit. And I'm just like, I've got too much of them that sit in idle that I just don't use. I've fallen prey of like, oh, I'm just going to run like I mean, put it this way i haven't run like an all boys list you know like 30 boys 90 boys for absolutely ages and i haven't painted half of them anyway i haven't run anything with knobs in i haven't run anything with I, i've run a lot of grot tank stuff because it's funny but i haven't run like death dreads I haven't run like any of the fighter plane stuff, and I've got these models, so I just thought to myself, you know what? I'm just gonna go on a massive war, but it's a painting war. And I'm gonna just paint as many orcs as I possibly can over the next couple of months and really bolster out my collection. Because what I wanna do is be able to run like not just mishmash lists, I want to run bespoke styled lists. So for example, I'm working in my spare time on top of the painting that we're doing. Just getting some this beast boss. Actually, I don't even need to do this. I can just do do this. Oh, is it frozen? Oh, it seems to have frozen. Oh, poo, poo earns. That's stupid and annoying. Why, why have you decided to? Ah. Oh. Bums. Why has it done that? I hate this, mate. I hate this, mate. I try. I set this up. I specifically tested it so that I could have just a fun time and not have to worry about all this bull. Oh, I think I know what it is. I saw a message pop up saying that something had. Um, two seconds. <laughs> we'll sort this out. Noise. Hey, Jenko. Thank you very much. Alert test. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Let's see if this can be alerted to wake the F up. 
what I think has happened is that I saw a message pop up uh, saying that one of my USB connections had dropped or died and I think that this laptop that I'm running on had a problem so two seconds we'll fix this together live because this is what we do you got to run with it you got to roll with the punches now if I click on this and then I activate it again Okay, so it's just it's just not working full stop. I'm gonna have to add in a new video layer, apparently. Because apparently it's just not liking that. I'll tell you what, technology is bloody great sometimes, isn't it? I just wanted to show you my little flipping knob. Okay, right, so I'm gonna remove this webcam from the scene. We're gonna get through this together. We don't worry about it. We've been through enough crashes, enough weird stuff that's happened on streams that we can bounce back from it. Okay, so can't have that one. Can't have this one. Okay, so we add a new source. Yep, yep, yep. And we want to add in. Hey, there we go. Right, okay, so you should be able to see a screen and screen at the moment. I'll sort it out, don't worry. Um, let's get this looking as lovely as we possibly can. Oh, okay, okay. Bit of a, uh, there we go. Right, okay. So before it starts, like, freaking out and doing anything else, let's just leave it be there. Uh, you should all... You should all be able to see that now. Cool, right? I can see that it's caught up. Oh, blind! I, 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 Smoogly, I know what I said. I know what I said. Right. So in 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 my grand, hey, e, easy now. Come on, focus up, pal. So I'm um. This is the one that's the work in progress at the moment. Uh, what we're what we're doing is we're using a lovely little technique called Slapshot Plus, which is what we do is we take a model. We do tons and tons of dry brushing over him to make him. Come on, mate. You're gonna make me work for it, down You are gonna make me blooming work for it. You are just a piece of trash, right? Okay. I uh, take it back. Um, all we do is we dry brush the absolute piss out of a model, and then we put on contrast, GW contrast over here. And then what we do is we add in, we block out the base color and then we give it a highlight. Now if that sounds like a lot of extra steps, sometimes it can feel like it, but the end result is you get a better gradient, it is still quicker than base coating and trying to glaze and do all the other stuff. And for people who don't think that Slapshot can be used well, I'm pretty happy with what I've managed to get out of uh, it because this is one that I did in, this is um, one that I did using that. And I'm really happy with how this guy has come out because this was slap chop blocked out the base the hut the highest base color and then added in one highlight and then maybe a wash so I'm pretty happy with how he's come out and this only took me maybe uh, like a day and a half to do so I'm so in terms of the in terms of the quality or the speed at which you can get these sort of models out, it's unquestionable, man. Like, they are just, it is just a lot, lot easier doing that there. So, we started this boy today. So we had, I'd dry brushed him all before. So what I've done is I've just basically gone over and I've slapped him up with some nice colors. And as you can see, like on the bone bits at the the, um, the armor, I've just blocked out the top color and left the sort of shading there to start building up that gradient. Um, there's a lot left to go, like I've started doing the tusks, but they need to be refined, they need to glaze them. Started doing the metals on this, they haven't had a wash yet, so they, they look a bit flat. But it's all just about getting these models out as quickly as possible while having them look nice as well. So, we're going to apply that same philosophy to the knobs. We've got five of them here. All horrible. The 
disgusting. Come on, mate, focus up. I wonder if I should just set the... Um, nah, actually, there's no point in me setting the... Um, God damn it. I mean, bl bless this uh, Logitech C920 or whatever it is, but it's just... It's uh, showing its age now when it comes to uh, focusing up. Come on, man. Focus up. So, um, well, we've got five different knobs. And we'll paint them up. What I need your help with is what colour scheme we're going to do them. They can all be individual. They can all be completely uniform. It doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, the gimmick here is that these are the hardest of the hard boys, you know. They um, are all rallying around a war boss. They've all come from different clans. So they basically don't need to all be... I mean, like, my heart is telling me that I should paint them up as goths, but... I could do that and do different ones. But, um, yeah, if people want to suggest colour schemes, that would be absolutely lovely. And I'd love to uh, see what uh, people think about it as well. Um, Smoothie says, do I do any other painting or art? You know what, I don't. I do a bit of uh, creative writing here and there, but um, I don't do much else because, one, I don't have the time, and I find painting something that exists far easier than creating the shape and then painting it like I have no doubt that I could probably paint something up to a good standard but almost only if somebody else had drawn it for me um, but yeah I would love to do more stuff like this but pff, you know you can't have it all I can't have uh, looks and talent eh? <laughs> Ugh, right oh some hot pink okay Orange and purple could look really sexy. Well, I'll tell you what, Kamikaze, because you were the first person to suggest that's exactly what we're going to start with. So I'm going to go, meeny, meeny, miny, you. Uh, we're going to go, no, actually, we'll go for one of these, because these three here are kind of, like, similar. We'll go with this guy here. He's going to be the first one that we uh, we tackle today. Where's my... I love that. It was, like, um, it unfocused so quickly there. Uh, so we'll start with this guy. We'll do... So you want to do orange and purple. What are we thinking? Orange for the helmet. And purple. Let's do purple. Let's do orange. Actually, let's give the, him a purple helmet. Because that's just hilarious to say out loud. And we'll give him orange shoulder pads. And we'll do black top tan trousers keep it uniform on those two bits there but we'll go orange on the shoulder pads purple for the hat or one orange one purple there what do you reckon um, young kamikaze fluorochlorine mate I don't have access to those paints for a start I've got to work within the contrast range to start with and then I can layer up from there right then so So, Griffhound Orange, I know we can do that. Because we can start getting layering up the purple there. We're doing black t shirts, brown belt buckles, metals are metals. Oh no, yeah, and then brown trousers. So, while I wait for Kamikaze. Oh, Nerdy Goth, love you. Um, turn off because it's start. Whoa, gonna start June 2. Ah, oh, amazing. Hope you have a lovely time there. Um, heck yes, says Young Kamikaze. Right, okay, so we've got the approval. And we're going to start with a base. Which one are we going to do? Uh, purpley, 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 purple, 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 purple. Right, okay. Don't she have a purple in contrast? Two seconds. I'm just going to have to jump into my little paint wagon. Be right back. Okay, so we're going to start with purple. Give him a nice little purple helmet. 
Um, I'll try and paint it around this distance here so you can see what's going on. But apologies if I do move out because um, my eyesight ain't great. And uh, sometimes I forget that I've got a camera. Oh. Okay, well, let's try and get it into focus, right? So what we're, we're going to do is we're going to start pushing down and around. Now this is a very light purple, almost pinky. So we may have to go for a couple of layers on this. In fact, just even looking at how little the coverage is going to go on there. Nature's purple. I remember being this being one of the duff ones. I may start with... What can I do to start with that? Because I don't have the deep purple ones there. I'll tell you what. I'll do Sigvold Burgundy. And then work up a pinky purple from there. Okay, right. I wanted some hot pink because I'm staring at these highlighters with college work. Oh, bless you. <laughs> nice. Oh, another Donatio. Oh, whoa. Okay. Oh, Christopher Steves has donated ten dollar. He do saying big fan of the orange and purple idea. Here is for funding the paints. You absolute superstar. Thank you so much. Ah, uh, I tell you what. It's it's good to be back on a sort of semi-regular form now because you know I've been away for a couple of weeks because I've been down seeing the family over Easter work's been picking up as well which has been very good I don't know if you guys are aware of this and this isn't me uh, bragging this is just something that I've been I'm just very very happy with the uh, future game showcase which is where we preview tons of uh, trailers and such um, for upcoming double-a games and indie titles um, that got picked up by <laughs> bloody Elon Musk and his cronies uh, over on Twitter and while we we thought we had pretty good numbers on the YouTube side of things it turns out that at one point during the presentation when it was on when I was hosting no less we had 400 So yeah, that was my 15 seconds of pre-recorded fame. It was I was so so glad that it um, that it wasn't live because I would have absolutely bricked it if I'd looked over and seen that amount of people watching me do that. Although the bosses did mention afterwards that they're thinking of um, further down the line turning it into a live show if I was going to do the um, the expansion pack feature bit that it was <laughs> and I was still like um yeah yeah sure sure that'll be fun go for it painting hello my friends how are you welcome to the stream and uh pull up a chair grab a brew your choice cold or caffeinated and warm just have a little chill with us while we paint some orcs and uh this one here that is dumb stupid purple head who you can't see because the, the webcam is just deciding not to <laughs> thank you essential i really appreciate that oh don't leave bags uh, don't don't uh, like i i appreciate all of the support that we get but i would hate it if people were um, putting themselves into financial dire straits um to support their favourite channels and stuff like that. Just being here and saying that you like it or sharing with your mates or just telling people that we exist because, you know, that's the hardest bit about this YouTube game is that, you know, just trying to stay relevant when the um, medium of Warhammer especially channels is changing. Like, um, like Bat Rep channels, they, uh, they are kind of experiencing a bit of a lull at the moment. And... You know that's uh, but I don't want to stop. I don't want to stop doing battle reviews. I like doing them. That's the whole point. Well, let's get some saucy orange on this. Work it under the shoulder pads. Oh, this is absolutely filthy. This is D and B filthy, mate. And the best part is, is that I've got a lot of very nice oranges that we can layer up from this. So we're just doing some griff armed orange on here. 
do you guys think that I should um, fix the perspective so that it's just this? Just um, focused at this range. Would that be better viewing for you guys? Because I can't promise that I'm going to keep it constantly within the range of focus. But I appreciate that it's probably not that much fun to watch something go in and out of focus all the time. Please tell everyone about us. Yes, <laughs> yeah, 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 to the point of irritation. Yeah, you heard Lawson. And you don't want to make him sad. That's the last thing we want. Yeah, Um. also, by the way, uh, you should, on the subject of Lawson, go check out his Instagram and or his AX profile. Because um, he has posted up some amazing orcs. Recently, we went up to the King of the North tournament. And Lawson printed and painted a full 1,250 point orc army and themed it around the Sons of Anarchy, hence why they are called the Sons of Anarchy. And they are amazing. Like, they had a customer stage. Every war biker, every flash gear, every model was rocking out in some fashion or form, and it looked absolutely spectacular. So go check that out. Okay, right. So those are our two base there. Is uh, Kamikaze, is that the sort of vibe that you wanted? Obviously, we will make this brighter. We will make it more powerful. But is that okay with you? A purple helmet. Hee hee. Ha ha. Hoo hoo. And the, the golden orange shoulder pads. Now, it may look a bit strange right now. But, um. Murphy, do not worry, my friend. I appreciate you being here, regardless. Uh, I will do a, a black t-shirt on him, which we'll use Black Templars for. All the children. X. Ding. <laughs> How are you getting on? Uh, let's go for Black Templar over here. Hey, Rosario, how's it going? And Kamikaze is loving it. That's good. I'm, I'm really happy. At the end of the day, I just want to do fun stuff for the people who take the time out to come and interact with the channel. If there's a little orky, little orky boy, rocking colours that you like, then fantastic. For everyone else who's watching who wants to get involved, just uh, have, have a little muse, have a little think to yourself about what colour you would like for your custom knob. Ah, live and let's dice, where the egg paints your knob. I always thought it was funny that the it took me ages to figure out the sort of law I say figure out um, until I was told the truth behind the orc knobs that it's like shorthand for nobility and it's um, them just it, definitely thinking that they are better than every other orc out there which well, was really really funny I always thought that it was just as like a kid like it was the other orc just calling them knobs which probably to be fair they were Dick, aren't you? Give me that nice black t-shirt. Um, and if anyone's wondering, <coughs> hello. Yeah. Oh, the uh, alert box once again fails to do its job unless I miss the bit. Ooh, you've been working on Necromunda train. Fantastic. Which bits? Have you played much of the Ash Wait? Oh, Chris. Oh, Chris. Buying an Age of Sigmar army. Gah. I'm so deep in the Warhammer hole as it is that I, the thought of starting another format would overload my tiny, tiny reptilian brain. I love the model range of Age of Sigmar. I think it is, without a doubt, the best models in all of Warhammer. Um... But it's Mikey and Lawson's uh, terrain as well. That is their speciality. And while I did have a um, Head Knights of Slanesh army for a bit, I just had to consolidate. And to be honest, I've just used it as a um, 40k demon army. I had to make some, uh, some choices. And much like they say in the amazing film, Poor Things, one more is too much. I have to go over this guy's skin because I realise there's a big patch under here that 
I haven't actually covered. What is everyone else painting at the moment? If you're not into the hobby, but you are into painting, let me know. Or if you're crafting anything, if you're a drawer, if you're making something. One of the lovely people over on our Discord got in touch with me recently and was saying that they uh, they've just got started getting into making rugs, which is pretty cool. <laughs> and they were like, um, "Do you want to have a custom live and let's dice rug?" <laughs> I was like, "Well, yeah, obviously." Although I feel uh, that my I, the thing is that I definitely would want one of those. It'd be fantastic, but it's just like <laughs> I don't have the money to pay for all of these things. You want to make sure that people are properly compensated for the time and effort they put into stuff. Like that. Okay, right. Uh, is that his t-shirt kind of done? It's a it's a base coat. It's not a thick base coat, but that's what we can pull up after that. Okay, so we'll now give him some trousers. Now for trousers, I actually find that um, wildwood contrast is a lovely, lovely, lovely trouser colour. I like giving my boys brand pants. Oh, Jenko is saying here, um, I'm never going to financially recover from starting Warhammer. Yeah. Oh, you make plushies. That's cool. I mean, how does one even get into that? And also, side note, uh, what type of plush plushies? And also, further side note, where can people find them? Because that sounds like a bloody brilliant gig. Hey, Hassan, how's it going, my friend? Good to see you. We're all just here painting knobs. As much flack as people gave uh, contrast paints when they came out. And rightly so, because some of the coverage on these is poo-poo pancakes. Um, they don't half speed up the work process. It's just nice to be able to just grab something, push some paint around it, get a fairly solid base coming out of it. Now you might notice that I'm not being too fastidious with the coverage on this, because with trousers with shirts usually go over them again with a, a block color to unify it because as you can see here it's a little bit patchy it's a little bit pooly oh, this is me dancing because usually i've got an animation for this um, because <coughs> existing, um, I usually have an animation for this, and uh, I realise that I'm on my laptop, so I don't have access to it. So I apologise. I'm really sorry. But thank you so much for becoming a Living Let's Dice Army supporter. You absolute legend. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I tell you what, as a little favour to you, pick out some colours, and I'll do you. I'll do the next knob after you, mate. I'll do. I'll do the next knob after you. Give you a little, little taste of the knob life. We should call it hobnobbing or something like that. No, but I do appreciate that. Thank you very much. Ah, it's kind of nice to come back to streaming and have like such a lovely, calm, and very very nice group of people to come back to because it's just um, I I build up in my mind sometimes. That if I go away for too long, if I step off the pot, it's just like, has it cooled down? I lose momentum, like, and then I start questioning it, and then I just get feel guilty because I'm just like people want to. Um, I, I want more than anything to just keep interacting with the people that give me the opportunity to do this, and sometimes I can feel a bit under pressure, but I don't. That's not your fault. That is. That is my fault. That's just me interpreting things badly sometimes. Uh, do I need to do any other brown? 
Bronze. We're going to do a different brown for the belts and buckles, but I think his pants are done. I probably should give him some uh, black boots as well, just thinking about it. The old classic orky bootage. Ooh! Existing. Hello, hello. Saying, royal blue main, yellow highlights are the go-to colours. Right, okay, I'll tell you what. We'll do it with this one next, because we'll do... Because he's got a zigzag armor pack piece here. Come on. Come on. Come on. You stupid. Um, you can, we'll do blue in this bit here, yellow on the outs on the outside there. That'll be a nice one. That will be nice. I'll tell you what, I am gonna change the uh, the focus of the camera because I feel like I would rather you guys could see it more. And I don't know actually if you are seeing it. Maybe maybe actually Maybe I'm just overreacting. Maybe it does focus after a while. I mean, I'm watching the screen now to try and see if it does. It definitely looks like it. <laughs> it doesn't look like it does. But then again, it does here. <laughs> oh, God. Um, that sub is from myself. Oh, bless you, mate. Bless you. Her art is amazing, by the way. Yeah, I've missed the paint streams as well. Like, I just want to... I want to get back onto a more regular basis I want to start you know just getting back into the swing of things because if you step off the pot it cools down oh yeah I was giving him black boots that's what I was doing uh, back to the black templar we go yeah Lawson when are you gonna fire up the old um, steamy streamy machine and get back on decent old painting streams It's always satisfying as well if you go through the slap chop method because when you put that first contrast paint on and it just gives you those little highlights here and there you're like ah oh, okay this is so much more satisfying than base coating because base coating you can spend hours and hours painting a model for it to look like utter cack and it's only when the highlight stage kicks in do you really start pulling the model together? I don't know about you, but I'm a very impatient person sometimes, so I want to see results and I want to see them now. So at least when you put this on, you can start seeing immediately like, ah, oh, okay, cool, right, there's the bit that I almost need to pick out more with the highlight, or something that um, I don't even need to touch again because the contrast is really settled in the recesses or pulled out that highlight for you. Might change up the music in a minute to something a bit more. Even though I like uh, the chill step stuff that's on this. It's on that lo-fi girl. I'm tempted to put on a band that has been roaming around my playlist for the last few days and I know that Lawson will absolutely love me to put them on as well uh, Fair to Midland I've just been listening to them a lot recently Hi it's Little Booties there Hello mate Oh, okay. Uh, missing chats here. Uh, the Krieg I'm working on, I'm going to skip the highlights and use that streaming grime. See, the streaking grime is a great shout as well because, again, it is effectively like doing slap chop in the reverse thing because it brings things down and leaves you with highlights once you wipe them off. Like, the slap chop stuff like this, it's not, it's not for everyone. I understand that. But it just is a quick way to get you off the starting grid. And it keeps me invested, at least, because like I say, you can take it from that. You can go to the um, other models I was showing before with just a few extra highlights here and there. Um, Lars said, the painting streams really got me into the channel way back when. Ah, oh, bless you, Lars. Well, you know what? 
I'm probably going to start doing more streams of the painting variety every Wednesday for the next couple of weeks because I enjoy doing them. I enjoy doing them for people like this. I get some painting done at the same time and it's a win, 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 win situation for us. Because the more models that I can paint, the more I can get on the table. And the more I can get onto the table, the more battle reports and fun stuff I can film using them. Okay, so we're just going to go for a side wall brown for the belts and buckles. I might even show you guys the metallic speed paints that I picked up the other day. Let's see what you think of them. I'm unsold on them at the moment. I feel like um, they are fine, but that is it. And while I understand the idea of painting metallics fast being a very, like, a, something that I would really want to have access to, I don't think that the end result is good enough to rely on fully. So you end up painting over it with a uh, full metallic colour base coat anyway. So it's like, what was the point of that? I used to hate cyborg brown. When I first got it, I couldn't see the point of it because it was so dark and I was using it so, I see, I was, it was so thick the way that I was globbing it on that I lost all of the the detail in it. And I was like, oh, this is a bit rubbish. Turned out that I was the rubbish one. Oh, the, uh, the knights you're talking about, the cherry red oak metallic. Um, I don't have it here in my vicinity. Uh, it is... Uh, do I have a demo? Oh, right. Two secs. I'm just gonna, this is just, uh, just for, for a Jane call. Oh, Colin, thank you so much, mate. Absolute legend. And Essential, big love to you, mate. Chris Breezy's in the house. I saw your name pop up the other day on uh, Wrestling with Regret. It was, uh, you recommended a, um, or did like a Patreon suggestion. And I was just like, I know that guy. I know that guy from work. Okay, two seconds. I'm just going to find if I've got the test piece that I'm talking about to show uh, Janko. So I don't have the the full knife, but I do have the uh, the test piece that I was looking at. Ugh. So this is um, Tamiya Cherry Red Spray over. So that, there's the lead belcher. Actually, is that lead belcher? That's uh, a chrome spray that I picked up from Halfords, and then the Cherry Red Spray just over the top with that one there. It's a bit thick on here because I did multiple layers uh, with different things. But if you look along there, that's the um, the end result that you should get. A beautiful cherry chrome red and that is as simple as spray that once spray that over yeah yeah Lawson you're totally right totally really that is so weird or are you taking the piss Chris because it's like it's it's just weird that there's probably not that many Chris Breezies out there but I saw um, your name pop up because he said um, this was nominated by Chris Breezy and I was like wait what um, right then, let us find. Now this is going to absolutely uh, tank the monetization for this channel, for this um, stream. But I'm going to load up Spotify. And 
uh, once that's done, we're going to get some tunage going. So get your uh, recommendations up for songs that you love to listen to once um, Spotify decides to. <laughs> don't, know what, don't know what it's doing. It's just having the time. Oh no, what's going on here? Why am I being messaged? For some reason, I'm still logged on to my um, my work Slack. Don't go away. Okay, right. So. Apologies if this is very loud to start with. I'm just going to check the audio level on that. That should be okay, but obviously, please let me know if you need it turned up, me turned down, or whatever, both. That is weird, Chris, but also very cool. Very cool indeed. Oh, okay. I need to do those belts up there. And it's back. And we were using Cygore Brown. <laughs> yeah. I wish that I'd kept a, a note. I wish I'd kept a note of who, um, uh, which pay per view it was. Because then I could have uh, just linked you to it. Okay, cool, right, I have lowered the music. Ooh, okay, I will definitely do that, Murphy, and put that on. This album in particular has just been living rent-free in my head for a bit. Just because it's so wonderfully odd. And his um, voice has got this weird sort of... Um, like shakiness to it. And I don't think I've ever heard any other frontman have this sort of like thing. Plus, the next song in this album is my favourite by a country bloody mile. So we are we blocked out the majority of his belt buckles, all of his bits and gubbins. Need to figure out what colour to do that. I might do that purple too. Oh, sorry, you can't see that. Uh, might do his little armband purple. Uh, metals are going to be metals. I can always deal with them later. In fact, I might do both of his armbands purple. And then we need to do this top strap, I think. Or do we assume that's metal? You can never tell with orcs. Uh, it does look like it's been hammered down, so that's probably metal there. And then we see the ropes and horns. Uh, we'll leave the metals alone. And then we'll start putting some uh, highlights on, I think, so we can start bringing this model together a bit. And then you can start seeing what I'm on about with this whole gimmick. Oh, Sherwin, hello, mate. Showing, in case you uh, boys and girls at home don't know, is one of the masterminds over at Steam Forge Games. Uh, board game designer extraordinaire. You have him to thank for, well, pretty much any and all of the outstanding classic gaming related titles that they put over there. And uh, my friends and I are currently playing through one of his uh, best creations, in my personal opinion. Uh, the Resident Evil 1 board game, which is so, so much fun. We are having the time of our lives, and we obviously added in the extra twist, because we are silly boys, of uh, chucking in a card that allows Albert Wesker to pop up at any point <laughs> during your campaign. And he has popped up at the worst possible times, chasing us through hallways, 
uh, opening doors uh, which connect tiles together and if tiles are connected together it means that all enemies on said tiles can do reactions when you move and shoot and it's uh, a recipe for disaster we've come so close to losing on three separate occasions because of him <laughs> and we've played four rounds so yeah <laughs> he's just coming out man um count poro says um do do i ever paint with an airbrush I need to base him by getting one do you know what i've never painted with an airbrush i don't have the ventilation uh, nor space here to keep it up full time what i hear the pack up and set the set up and pack down for it is an absolute mapper wrapper so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna paint using wildwood skeleton horde and gore grunter fur and do a lovely little bit of wet blending so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a tiny smidge of wildwood then quickly move over to gore grunter fur and then to skeleton horde and we're gonna start at the very base of the horn here and pull those colors up towards the lightest bit over here so at the moment, because the horn is so small on this side, sorry about that mate, it's not the size, it's what you do with it that counts, I will only need to do like a absolute smidge in here. It may look dumb to start with, but trust me, trust the process. So we're just going to do a big ring all the way around this. And then we're going to quickly wet the brush wipe off about 90% of the excess, move over to Gore Grunt of Her, and then go another line up here, don't worry if you can see the visible transition line right now, again, trust the process. And then wipe off a little bit, nearly all of it if you can, and then skeleton horde just at the tip here, Bend them a little bit. Don't worry, again, transition is nowhere near done. Just try to do is just get a little bit of movement between the colours, and the water is going to help us do that quite a lot because it's going to push away from the highest point, pull it down there. Now, it ain't perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but this basis that we've got right here means that I can pick this top line out with a highlight and do maybe one or two lines here with a glaze to pull it back down. And now we've got the skeleton horde mixture on there, so I have a quick wash of his teeth as well. Cool. Right. Uh, onto the other horn then. I believe it is. Um, what are you laughing at? What are you laughing at? Are you laughing at my little my little horn joke? Um, or are you laughing about me praising your work? <laughs> it's true. He does make good stuff. Um, Jonathan Young was mostly a cover artist the past year or two. This is Okay, cool. I'll check that out in a second. Okay, right, I'm just going to get this horn done and then we'll change tracks. Actually, before we do, I'm going to put on a song that I... And I'll be quiet for it so that you guys can appreciate the madness that is um, Fair to Midlands. It's a song called Ricky Tiki. Or Ricky Tiki? And it is the craziest of songs. I'll be quiet while it's on because I just I want more people to listen to it. I'll turn it up a little bit so you've got it. And I'll just remember to turn it back down in a minute. Right, enjoy.
that was Ricky Ticky. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit, of a, a bit of an odd song, but just amazing fun. Right, okay, what was the suggestion we had a while back to move over to that? Um, oh yeah, this is so, I don't know if you can see it on this, but it's, um, the transition is just starting there. You can see as it's drying on the left horn. I don't know if it's in focus, by the way, because I'm not looking at the preview at the moment. Um, that will give me the basis to work on when I'm taking it up to the next level. Oh, Ollie, thank you very much. Shout out, Spud! Or do you mean Spud the band? Oh, yeah, hold on. I was looking for who suggested. Next one. I've just seen um, Young Kamikaze's reason for how uh, they started doing the plushies. That's really nice. Uh, Jonathan Young Jetpack. Okay. Loving the names of these uh, already. That's got a ton, isn't he? You know what? I'm just going to stick on the Forge Your Destiny album. We'll see how it goes. Oh, I see. This is a. Ooh, a dungeon playlist. You know what? I'm just going to let this roll. See how it goes. Hey, stranger. How's it going, my friend? How's it going? Um, this is the thing. I'm using a different microphone because I'm sat at the painting table. So I've got to just make do with what i got. But hopefully you guys can at least hear me. Let me know if I need to bump down the audio again. Oh, Starship Velociraptor. Okay. How are you, stranger? You getting on well? Right, it is... It is on. already give me that sort of um, what are they called mount the summit vibes scale the summit is that what it is mount the summit it's crazy how people how well people can play the guitar like <laughs> synth in this case I imagine it would be I love this because this is basically like if um, if Dragon Force had read pirate novels as a kid instead of um, the choose your own adventure fantasy novels Right, so he's done his armbands. Metals are metals, we know what they're going to be. He needs to do his, uh, the ropes. And the ropes are easy because it's just a skeleton horde once more. Stranger, if you're still about, mate, how are you getting on? You been up so much? <laughs> yes, we are being creative in here. Boxy, it is uh, 
and it's just got a lot more talented now that you're here. I have to say, just absolutely blown away by your art. It's crazy. How's your streaming stuff going, by the way? Nice and easy ropes done here. Then I think that we are done with the non-metallic base colours all blocked in. So what we'll do is we'll pick one of these now and start pushing up from it. So I think, oh she can nice, do that bit there. There's chest, I forgot to do that. Two sex, we need to get Gut Ripper Flesh. <laughs> no, 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 no. The, uh, how it works over here is just we have a fun time we share in everyone's successes. Trust me, man. I've got I've got I've got one culture, I've got a future game show, I've got enough. I want other people to have a good time as well, you know. Okay, there we go. Fill it in with gut ripper flesh. Touch up that little armpit as well. A little stanky armpit. Right, we'll do the the trousers. The trousers over here need to be done because they are dis disgusting. Disgusting me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly grab Rhinox Hide, Mournfang Brown and maybe some Drab. Oh, thanks, Ryan. Well, my friend is about to get even better because this is just um, gut ripper flesh off of um, over a slap chop thing. And what I did with the slap chop is I started with um, Mechanica Standard Grey, then dry brushed up to Dawnstone, then dry brushed up to Spaceship Exterior for a sort of lighter grey equivalent. And then finished with a, a Lawson special that he, I'm only recently turned into Bolt Titanium White by Pro Acryl. And it gives you that lovely gradient that you can then just uh, work on. But then we're going to take it even further. Because these, these are the greens that we're going to be using to get it looking real nice. So we're going to go for Auric Flesh. And then we're going to start mixing in some of these around it. But I'm going to do different types of orc skin tones. So we'll go from like here to here, go from here to here to here, there to there, so on and so forth. Because I quite like having a bit of variation rather than just one specific orc skin tone. Um, you can have complete freedom with what with your armies. I mean, people depend. That depends on which like type of warhammer you play. To be honest, like if you go. Um, to what's called Wama 30k or the Horus Heresy, if you paint something that's even remotely off what the the book says it was, then people will chew you out for it. Like they're very fastidious with it. But when it comes to like the basic casual play stuff like this, oh, you can go crazy with it. Count, um, I too worry about what looks good and what doesn't. And in the end, I basically just go screw it let's have a have a go because it's like even with this guy I was working on earlier I started off by painting his um, like saucy style tunic this color and then was like oh god it's not gonna match with like any reds or anything like that and I thought you know what it doesn't matter because once the model is finished it will pull everything together as you can see so this is the work in progress this guy's about I don't know like 50% done at least he's starting to get more fleshed out stuff here. And then 
We'll just keep working. We'll just keep working on it. Oh, what's going on here? Oh, Kerry's trying to steal my... <laughs> she's trying to steal my Spotify. That's why it stopped there. Tell you what, we'll let her have it. Because she's uh, listening to something over there. And we'll pop back on the lo-fi hip-hop beats. Um, these, Ryan, are just for 40k in general. I'm just going to start running models that I don't necessarily normally run in my Orc armies. Because I have five of these painted up. I only have about 20 boys painted up and it's just like a few units here and there and I can start running lists that will be really themed around a certain thing rather than just a hodgepodge of just here are some orcs. So like for example doing the uh, the beast boss over here means that I've then got a, another HQ to lead my beast snaggers and I calculated up the points. I've got about 1,500 points of that, and I could run that just as a full beast snagger army. With these guys here, what I want to do is run um, Gaz uh, more because he's like the biggest and best, and I just barely run him. And we did a HQ battle royale recently, and I just wanted to give him a go more. But you need to, I think, I think he's a leader of knobs and mega knobs. And you've got, I've got mega knobs on the thing to do as well. Basically, I'm just going through all of the units that I just don't necessarily use much and just thought, screw it, I'm going to paint them all up so that when bloody 11th edition of Warhammer 40k rolls around, I will have every basic unit type ready to go. Kamikaze, thank you so much. Absolutely fine. You lurk away, my friend. We know you're there. I appreciate you, man. Um, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to start pulling up, I'm going to flatten his, flatten his boot out, yeah, I'll flatten his butt out with uh, some more fang brown. Oh, cow, bless you mate. But also, I've been... I've been experimenting with this style for a, a while now and I think it helps so much just picking one army because I've been flitting between so many different armies recently I found it hard to um, to settle down and just pick one I think the orcs have always been my passion they are my love my, my life So, again, this might look strange because we're painting over an area that definitely wasn't the same shade of brown. But it's okay, trust the process. Because the Wildwood has given us some extreme highlights, which means that we don't need to pick them out later. And all we're going to do now is we're just going to pull the paint away from the recesses, hit those higher points, not the highest points. And it just creates a nice bit of difference. You end up with a pair of trousers that has multiple shades of brown and also gives it that sort of nice wear worn look. So even though Mournfang Brown is going to be our primary colour, as it were, for the pants, the little snippets of lighter colours, darker colours, give a nice little bit of texture to his butt. Thanks, Crazy Doug. Oh, by the way, Crazy Doug also is one of the best painters in the world. You can see one of his orcs that he kindly did for me for my birthday. It is chooses to focus one of the best looking orc models you will ever see this guy is getting run a hell of a lot more in my armies I tell you that much because of the fact that we only recently found out that he can attach himself to mech guns and make beanies life an absolute misery and if there's one thing that I try to do on a daily basis is make that man's life misery. The 
Doug is my uh, go-to person for advice when it comes to um, how to get things looking real nice. Are you working on anything at the moment, Doug? Who am I kidding? You are working on something 24-7, aren't you? And the best part about all of this is, is that these don't need to look perfect. These are just... Boys... That, trust me, will die. <laughs> the way I play any of my orcs, they aren't staying on the table for long. <laughs> So we've given him some nice texture in his butt. Do I need a bit more of that? Get in there, get in there. Right, so we've given him a nice pair of broom trousers. Frog! I too miss the old, the little ones that had the tiny little squats. I've got some. Uh, it probably got about 30 of the old, old school ones in there. I'll tell you what, for you, I'll paint one up and I can chuck him into the uh, into the mix. Thank you very much. Oh, it's a secret. Ooh. Okay. I'm excited and unnerved at the same time. But also, I hope you have fun with it. Uh, right, okay, let's work on the green skin of this green skin. Oh, I love the old school Gaz. He's amazing. Now, which uh, which one of these are we gonna do? War boss green? No, why not? Oh, rogue trader on the side, man. You are living life. I really should get back on that. Actually, thinking about it, because we did start a um, we did start a lovely. Lovely, lovely playthrough of that. Then again, life just got in the way, as it tends to do. I'll come back to it. I always do. What if one orc looted in SF? Oh, that's a good idea. That is good. It's like, look at all the things I've picked up from this purple. Actually, would. Because they are technically a shade of purple, would they uh, panic and be like, oh, lads, we can't see him. So now Warboss Green is a bit more muted than Gut Ripper Flesh. It's going to give us that uniform base to start working back up off. Long live Scrungo. Oh man, what a legend. In every form. To be fair, I was thinking, um, because Fallout London is dropping soon-ish, if I remember correctly, which I'm not sure I do, um, we should get the gang back together, send Scrungo out on one last mission, see how he fares. now with this extra highlight what we can do is you see like where the um, the dry brushing has kind of left like speckly bits you can start painting over them with another layer and just tying them in so you either fix the gradient if it was too much or too little or if you've got a thin enough bit of water you can just highlight it a li little bit and it pulls it all together Potentially my favourite bit of painting orcs is doing the skin. It's just, if you get it right, it can be the most beautifully vibrant, shocking wheel. It always just looks great when it's on.
Vernon well, says, um, any chance of a vanquished blade? Oh man, I promised you guys that actually, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think I've got to make good on that promise. Because I bloomin' well love that game. And it's not too long that I won't get completely like overwhelmed by it. Because sometimes, obviously, when I only stream for two hours a week, I look at what's ahead in terms of like, like Rogue Trader is a perfect example when I'm loving that game. But I'm just looking at it going like, oh my god, how many hours, how many weeks is this going to end up taking for us to get through? Iron Jaws. Glow in the Dark Orcs is a great shout. Have you ever experimented with um, like neon paints, Doug? assume as a man with a proclivity for painting you've tried it all you've seen it all you've done it all skin tones together probably the bit that ends up taking the longest because you just got to do it very slowly with thin layers get your greens looking green but then my favorite step is the next one because then you just go into the full highlights and really start to make these boys look special Sounds like we're going into a transition in green wing. Me and Kerry have been watching that recently. It's got such a depressing ending. <laughs> right, so even if you look at the, the skin tones of the two orcs, you might not be able to see that much right now. But we are starting to add more color and depth in, bit by bit, bit by bit. So now every layer that I put on from this point is just going to start targeting the higher bits of it to really get a uniform flat colour in some areas. And bits where he's um, got his hand clenched. But obviously, don't want to do too much around them. Because that's where he's all of his orky blood is rushing, so the natural highlights that come off of his knuckles and stuff, you want to kind of just leave them there. And what have we got then? We've got a nice olive green, olive style green. Oh yeah, do a small kill team of glow in the dark guys, that'd be amazing. You could do it with the, because um, I think that the Night Lords 
they're coming out fairly soon, aren't they? We could have uh, we could have done glow in the dark night lords, which would admittedly be very against their character type of being stealthy night hunters, but it could be very cool that once all the lights go down. You see massive sort of day glow vampiric paint and stuff like that on all on them. I quite like the look of the um, the new kill team nightmare thing. It looks okay. I uh, I don't collect either thing of Night Lords nor the Mandrakes. I think they're from the Dark Elder or. or um, Whatever they're called now. I like the look of them. I do not fancy playing the armies they're attached to. Right, okay. We've given him at least one. One full coat there. Got all of the. So now, it's time to take it up a notch. How are we going to do that? We are going to look at going for some Skarsnick Green. We'll mix it with our war boss little thing that Doug told me many, many moons ago. When you're going up to the next thing, just mix the two of them together for the first bit. 50 create the transitionary color we'll just put that on first so you don't end up with such striking lines so now we're looking for the dippy doppies Make them muscle bold boys. Really do love Scar Snake Green. Low mandrakes. Ooh, that would be good. That would be very good. Starting to pull the right colours in. I've got quite a thin layer on this. Scary, scary terror tactics. Yeah, yeah. I loved the um, two kill teams that they teased at. I can't remember what the last thing event that they had was, but it was the um, Halfkin. Uh, so the Leagues of Batan, and then they had the um, the Brood Brothers. I was like, yeah, that looks sick. the 
fallen guard being controlled by the gene stealer cult just looked it just looked awesome admittedly though um the kill teams are kind of falling into very similar patterns now it's like once per season you'll get your space marine equivalent your guard equivalent and then um your xenos one i obviously would love to see um more orky ones on there but i feel like they getting the commando so early was such a big win i just would love to see more variations of them like imagine if they um came up with like an all grot one that was kind of like a bit of a jokey kill team i think that because the um the scene is so hyper competitive that gw is kind of shying away from doing more jokey and silly stuff but i'm like oh come on man it would be nice to have something a little bit on the wacky side I picked up the new white dwarf or new ish white dwarf the other day um, the one that's got the rules in for um, the uh, rogue trader combat patrol and I'm really looking forward to running that with um, on, against Beanie um, the only problem is, is that I need like another 10 voidsmen, uh, I think it's 5 voidsmen at arms and 10 breaches, but I'm thinking that we're probably going to sub them out. Oh, Orc Storm Boys would be great. Yeah, imagine that. You didn't get like the full 10, but you maybe got 8, but they all had the fly keyword and they could just smash forward. Yeah, that would be lovely. But alas, I don't know if we're going to get there. Oh yeah, Chris, I end up just using the same brush. It's probably a terrible habit on my part. I'm sure that Doug is uh, gritting his teeth. Just like, yep, love it when you use the same brush all the time. We are now onto the full portion of Skarsnik Green. So we're just looking for the very, very top highlight bits. Fight the muscles who is for armor here. I don't think I'm gonna turn that brother. Um and then we're gonna go over with Ogrin Camo. left flesh is a good one to do at the very very top yeah it's nice now you start getting that true green coming out BC, that is probably actually a great idea. I should just make my own commando unit that is all grots, and as long as they're the same height and on the same base, like you say, just run them like that. Oh, trust me, uh, Count, everyone needs a Doug in their life. He's like the master painter of our group, so we're always just like bringing him stuff. Being like, "What do you think? What do you think?" with this. I probably went a bit too much on that. Yeah. It's fine. 
said before, they're looking a lot better than when I first uh, picked them up. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we are gonna do some Ogrin Camo. Just like this. Hey, Chewy. Good to see you, my friend. Oh, I tell you what, I love the um, the shamans and the weird boys from the Age of Sigmar range. I use the um, uh, the one from Warhammer Underworlds. I can't remember his name, but he's got like a snake on his arm. Um, as one of my weird boys for 40k, and the other one is um, another shaman character that was from Fantasy that um, I think has been completely written out now. Okay, so now we're doing the top, top, top highlight. So this bit's what we only want to do. There's lips, cheekbones, tip of his nose, and then tiny, tiny highlights of it. Elsewhere, just to pick out the extremities. We really don't need much. It's mainly in places that draw the eye. are just you only see in the model sometimes in focus i think you should just change it to a fixed focus all right hold on i'm just gonna do it let's hold this here Now it should be always in focus when I lift it up. Puppet on a stick. <laughs> that is brilliant. Age of Sigmar Orcs are just amazing as well. Again, there's that big boss that's riding um, the, oh, the dragon looking thing. Hey, Stefan, how's it going? And even like the, um, the what call it, the um, cruel boys, they are a spectacular range of models. I absolutely love them. Now what I may do is go back after this and add in a few like um, bits of wash into the skin here. I don't think that's come out like I want it to. Just needs a little bit, a little bit of refinement, but I can definitely work on what I've got here. Uh, what do we need to do now? What do we need to do now? We are going to. I'll tell you what. We got time. I'll do the orange on the top of the shoulder pad up here to get that looking mint. So. About to carry on with some crisis suits. Oh, nice, 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 nice. Did you pick up the, um, what's it called, the Croot Hunting Pack? Because uh, Beanie was so excited when that got mentioned. It's just like everything that he could possibly want for his army in one box. Where, oh, where did I put my oranges?
ones that we're going to be using are the same ones that I used for my Chaos Knights. Bright orange and light orange. Ooh, they're twins. Twins battle. I just realised I'm probably going to uh, quickly change the the focus. Actually, no, that's, that's fine. There we go. Right, let's start off with some bright orange. And this one is... Uh, Orange is a pain in the ass. Pain in the ass. Because of the fact that we... And I'm switching my brush now to a uh, small base brush just because we need a lot of coverage, boys. And I'm just going to have to do the classic technique of thin layers applied with care. Grow. does kick ass. Picked up the crew box, don't open this other bit. Oh, how many other projects are you looking at there, John? What's the um, retaliation cadre? Because I am um, not too familiar with Tau. Beanie is the, uh, the Tau master. Assuming by the fact that you said that it's that you're building crisis suits in order to run it, I'm assuming it's crisis suit heavy. How did you feel about the the change to the crisis suits? This was uh, chosen by one of the people in our chat, Young Kamikaze. He said he wanted purple and orange. And I was like, yeah, let's just do it. Let's just bloody do it, mate. Although, as you can see, orange is a Smelly bastard, sometimes. Can you get it right? Can you get it right? It's absolutely banging. I'm sure that Lawson will probably tell me after the stream that, oh, didn't you not know that there's this um, paint by like Goop Squirrel or something like that, or some lesser known paint brand that it'd be like, it applies in one coat, mate. Is the detachment focused on crisis suits getting in real close for extra strength and AP? The changes make sense even if the pain feels somewhere else. Yeah. A lot of people were saying the same sort of thing. They kind of were like, oh, I'm up in arms about it. And then they were like, eh, fine, whatever. Pretty much everything. Every Warhammer army goes through that sort of thing. It's like the moment that you build something 100% kitted out for a specific reason and it starts doing well in one edition, GW will come along and be like, yeah, shame about that, mate. Magnetize everything. Just like I don't want to. Tough. Buy more then. The clunky egg. Because it's going to save metals for a uh, air quotes treat for me 
thing to do once you guys have all logged off for the day. Tan while I'm waiting, might do that. Get down to those recesses, start pushing them back a bit more. Now, do I have my Beal Tan out? Of course I don't. <laughs> Silly. How's it going, friend? Thank you very much for joining. And thank you very much for the nice, kind words as well. <laughs> oh, BC. I would have I would have panicked, done a big gulp, and then been like, yeah, yeah, sure. I, I, I'm sure I could do that. I'm sure. Bit of wash can't sort, can it, boys? Next time, I will give my uh, next one some bright red Sonic shoes. I'll even paint the um, the silver bit here white so we can do it. Uh, it has been a really nice stream to come back to, like I was saying before. I always get a bit nervous when I've left it a while. So I always just feel like I've let people down. But um, it's lovely to come back and have a nice chill time and hang out with you all. And the time just flying by as well. We've got a quarter of an hour left before I've got to go. When I say got to go, I choose to go hang out with my girlfriend or the paid actress known as Kerry. tops pop it's funny as well because I always think about the amount of time that you spend on models like these just a singular knob a lone rogue knob and how quickly he'll likely be taken off the table the next time that I play Beanie because he ain't no fool he knows which units that he needs to take out he doesn't want one of these boys getting in close combat with him they come up with like three attacks a piece and the big chopper is like strength seven and I think that yeah if you call the war everything gets an extra attack and an extra pip of strength and trust me a strength eight axe coming in with four attacks if they're led by a war boss I think they get plus one on just their melee hits so hitting on twos wounded on twos. Admittedly, I uh, think that the big chopper is at minus one? Yeah, same as a regular chopper, I think. But forcing space marines to save on fours ain't bad. So, hitting on two, wounded on two, make them save on a four, so a 50-50 shot. And I think it's uh, more damage than a regular chopper, so it's two. So you'd be looking at 
every failed one being a dead space mine. That is pretty cool. So what I was thinking of is because I've got five of these already painted up, I've never run the sort of like war boss with a truck full of the boys. So I was thinking, yeah, bring out the truck, get that out of retirement. Chuck them all in, fling them over the battlefield. He'll probably get popped turn one and they'll foot slog all the way there. They'll die. And then uh, that'll be uh, my game. <laughs> yeah, that orange is really starting to come through now. Chunky monkey, he's a chunky monkey. Yeah, that looks sick. Count, I, I don't know. I, I always think about it. I'm um, just like, if I asked her to stop taking my money and actually be my girlfriend, I don't know what she'd say. And I, I'm so afraid of finding out that I don't even bother. Just a relationship that works <laughs> as is. <laughs> okay, right. Let's actually let's commit. Let's actually do the bloody metals then. The job that everyone unanimously hates doing. Hate doing metals. Love the music. Hate to paint it why I've completely burned out on Chaos Space Marines at the moment because I had a uh, I've got like a full Emperor's Children army and after I did, I think it was the Legionaries were the last ones that I did the amount of gold trim that I had to paint on them I was just like, oh, I freaking hate this man A nice silver breast band. Why not? I probably could have made that purple as well, or orange. That's okay. I'm sure that young Kamikaze will forgive me. Oh, yep. I keep forgetting. I've got to have a different palette to my metals and my regular ones. Taking my money and my Spotify. I'll tell you what, she comes for the orcs though, that's it. I'll, I'll put my foot down then. She's not having the boys. She's not having the wee lads. She's turned the weeds against us. So we get all the metals done. Just blooming more highlighting. It's kind of nice in a way because I like the idea of treating each model like it's its own character and spending time on it because at the end of the day, yeah, you could just slap the metals on and call this job a good one. But I want to actually paint for tomorrow's battle not just getting it out as soon as possible. Uh, there's a few models in my army that I painted quickly to get onto the tabletop that I look back at now and actively don't want to run them because of how bad they're painted and at least in my perspective since I feel like I've grown a bit as a painter. So I don't run them and when I spend time and I paint stuff like this just go a little bit slower I look back at it and think okay cool I don't want to repaint that that was the best of my ability at that point in time but it was done to a standard where I don't feel immediately like ooh growth
Has anyone in the um, group played the old world yet? We've had a few games and it's very fun. When I say we, I mean I've watched other people play and also I've partaken in a small battle but it wasn't my army. I'm still slowly painting up my Bretonians. Oh, what the um, the color scheme, or just the way that he's done his bits and bobs? Oh, thank you. The horns. Um, one of the things where it's. I remember doing them for the first time, and just panicking loads because you've got to quickly blend, like wet blends and bits together. And uh, I was like, oh god, this is going to go so wrong. And uh, admittedly, the first few times that I did it, it did. I'd just taken three colours and there was a very visible transition ring between them all. But now I just realised it's like, oh, okay, I can fix it in post even if it goes horrendously wrong. There's always a chance to recover. Oh, the orange and purple. Ah, well, there we go. So this one will be this colour and I think the next one I agreed is going to be... Um, yellow and royal blue, so that'll be a fun one to do. Who knows, if I get quicker at doing this, we might be able to look at doing an orc a stream, and then when coupled with the painting that I do outside of the streams, should be able to start seeing some progress on these pretty blooming quickly. That'd be nice. Probably just um, spare myself the punishment and do all of the metals before I do the stream next week so that I can come in and just do the fun stuff. Because the fun stuff is the fun stuff. That's what people want to see. They don't want to see me bloody painting trim for 45 minutes or whatnot. But yeah, the orange has come out nicely. Nice flat colour there. Oh, why did I do that? to just say, that's where I'll put the highlights. I just stabbed it with metallic paint. Oh, Christ. Luckily, luckily, I've done this before as well. Just remember, water it down, tissue it off. Bloody idiot. <laughs> oh, Stefan, I know. I know. It's so ridiculously expensive. And I was lucky in the sense that I was sent the starter kit um, and some Bretonian extras by GW. But um, if I hadn't been, I probably wouldn't be looking at Old World for the moment. I think it's a fantastic game. The models are just so nostalgic to me. But at the same time, some of the prices they've been put out with are, let's just say, questionable. I looked at the price for, oh, what was it? Because um, I'm only collecting Bretonians, but no interest in any other army because of the fact that I just can't afford to do another army and I don't have the space. I can't remember what I was looking at. It was like either some lords or some paladins or something like that. Oh no, it was the battle pilgrims. When I realised that in order to have a functioning battle pilgrim unit with the reliquary, um, I would have to spend nearly £90 for one unit. One unit of peasants that would likely break turn one and flee. And I was like, nah. I'm good. I'm good. If you guys are looking, by the way, for a content creator that does amazing... Actually, I'll recommend two off the top of my head that uh, do amazing hobby tips. One is Mediocre Hobbies. Uh, the host's name is Andy. He's a lovely, lovely lad. Um, he paints in the same 
he's actually taught me to paint like this the whole contrast plus of do your shade in first build up the base color afterwards leave the sort of natural shade that you built up with a dry brush in and then just do one or two highlights but a focus on stuff that pulls the eye in like the faces and like the weapons um he's fantastic and he gets models out so quickly to such a really really high standard um great tips on there and the other one is um Oh god, this is embarrassing. The the hobby painter had his name. Uh, two seconds. I'm gonna quickly check my phone. He is. Do do do. In my. Oh, the painting coach. The painting coach. Young Kamikaze is back. You can take a look at your, your boy. Alright, mate. Here's a guy. Just working on doing the... Um, the stinky old metallics now. Uh, which I hate doing. But they've got to be done. later on I'll do kamikaze as I'm getting finished and then I'll um, show him at the beginning of next week's stream and I'll move on to the next one but what I'll do is I'll do all the metallics maybe I'll get all the skin up to a standard that I'm happy with as well and then that way we can just focus on getting maybe two or three of the armor schemes down because the actual main bits of it, like the um, the skin and uh, the the rusty plates, will all be done and dusted. Pretty sure that's some like brass and copper into this one at some point as well. But I'll deal with that at another time, at another juncture. But for right now, I'm happy with how he's coming out. Chef's kiss. <laughs> yeah, I'm really, really liking the um, the orange and purple. Looks really smart, and it'll look even better with all of the shading and highlights and bits and bobs done. And then we'll do um, use which one was it? This one, and we'll do um, royal blue on this bit here, and yellow here. So it'll be blue, blue, yellow, yellow and blue, half and half maybe, down here. And then we can do yellow, blue, yellow, like on the patchwork bits here. Because he's got like a sort of more patchworky armour. And that'll be a really fun one to do. But like I say, I'll, um, what I'll do is before next week, I'll take all four of these. And I'll do stuff like trousers... I'll tell you what, it's probably easier for me to do uh, trousers, boots, skin, and weapons, like the metallics. And then we can discuss what we want. Um, actually, no, the trousers are going to be dependent on the um, the colour of the armour, aren't they? Because they will look weird if we just went ahead. I'll do metallics, bits like this, like the um, like ropes and stuff like that, twine, weapons. And make sure all the skin's done, up to a standard that I'm happy with. But yeah, though, that's what we started, effectively. That guy there. we're getting there bit by bit happy boys cool right but this has actually gone past the stream uh, time so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call it here my friends I really really enjoyed that and I hope that you have had a fun time chilling out with me looking at some orcs and having some good old fun times I'll hopefully finish this guy off uh, by next week as well I'll have all to show you. That'll be good. And then what I'll try and do is I'll uh, I'm really gonna try and up my painting game. Do core stuff with you guys here.
get some characters so I can showcase them for you. And we're just going to keep focusing on the orcs. We're really going to sort of hammer home on that and make sure that I've got a full war ready to go in many different forms. Because I've already got a speed war upstairs. I've got all the buggies. I've got three trucks already painted up. And I've got enough boys to sort of keep that going and death copters as well. I want to focus on beast snaggers. I want to focus on uh, knobs, mega knobs, and boys. Like get those core ones down, because then that way we'll have everything covered, and I can run all different types of flavors. Um, really, really appreciate everyone joining in here. It's been such a pleasure, and I sometimes feel a little bit like exhausted after doing the other streams by gaming, because it like takes my focus and attention. But this, I feel so chilled and so relaxed and it's been an absolute pleasure to hang out with all the people here and i really appreciate you all just um gotta say it again um even if you lurk even if you never speak in the chat i just appreciate you being there it really does mean a lot to me and uh thank you cool right then gents ladies everyone else i'm going to be bouncing off and i uh, hope you have a lucky evening and uh i'll see you soon for more orky goodness next week Bye bye bye. Oh, look at my finger. Ooh, woohoo. <laughs> Freaky. Right, <laughs> see you later, guys. Bye 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 bye.